Hello, everyone. I'm uh, glad to be here today. My name is Caroline Tonna, and I'm the curator of Palazzo Falson. Uh, it's a historic house museum in the heart of a uh, medieval city, uh, Medina, in Malta. And uh, I'm very honored to be invited by Icon Malta to present something from the museum on a very special uh, occasion of the International Museum Day. So uh, Palazzo Falson is, is an 800 year old building. It's always been lived in. And the last owner was Captain Olaf Golsher, who was um, half Swedish and half Maltese. Um, and he was an avid collector. He, he loved collecting things. And that was the purpose why he bought Palazzo Falson to put all his collections there uh, this was around 1927, uh, and he lived there till 1962. Um, he's, he loved his house, he made it a dream house, he decorated the stately rooms, um, beautifully decorated, and he placed his you know, many collections, we count around 45 different collections, from furniture, maps, so, uh, watches, uh, silverware, um, books, uh, manuscripts, uh, you name it, you find it there. Um, he was also an artist, so he was painting himself um, and uh, he was very much interested in um, Maltese uh, cultural history. Um, he was an, uh, an active um, participant in looking after um, land and underwater archaeology, which he pioneered actually in Malta. So yes, Olive Gosh is a distinguished man and um, he left his legacy by uh, making sure that his home and collections will be open to the, to the public. I'm very uh, privileged, I feel very privileged that I am looking after this beautiful museum together with um, uh, my, my, my team, my strong team of museum hosts and even maintenance people there. Um, um, and also the, the uh, museum is managed by Fondazioni Patrimonio Malti, which is a, a non-profit organization in Malta that disseminates you know, um, continuously uh, our local heritage through um, exhibitions, by means of publications, and uh, the museum and even a gallery. So let's start the presentation. Um, I, uh, I thought of delving into the archives of Palazzo Falson. We have all the papers, the documents of Olaf Gulsher, letters, postcards, contracts, you name it, it's all there. So it really gives us the, um, the base for creating the narrative of um, the last owner who was living there and a snapshot of what it was like in Malta for a well-to-do family um, in the 20th century. Um, so we really see history through the life of Olive Gulsher. And um, since my interest is also in vintage photography and uh, dress history, I thought I'd share something with you. Um, some photos from the archives. So it's not just written documents, but we also have family photos in different albums. Some of them are even like loose photos, but I'm going to start <clears throat> with um, a very special book, which is the oldest one. It's, it's a photo album. Uh, and just to give you an idea of, of the size, um, it's uh, the Carte de Visite album. Uh, these were very, very much in vogue, very, very fashionable. And people used to um, take their photos. This was in its very early days uh, of photography. So it was really like a great inno innovation. Um, in around the most that was present around um, nine, uh, 1840s. So this, this book goes back to maybe not 1840s, but surely 1850s because there are photos taken by uh, Leandro Preziosi, um, who was a professional photographer in Malta, one of the very earliest photographers, whom I also um, had the luck to, to study his works. And this is the kind of um, card de visite 
uh, album where one would put family photos there. And as you can see, the size is very small. So you could even carry um, these photos in say pocket of a jacket or in a purse. And it was, you know, that's why they're called card de visite because they were like literally um, business cards. So this is the, um, one of the highlights of Palazzo Falzon. What you're seeing here, it is the central courtyard. So the rooms sort of circulate around this beautiful and charming um, courtyard. And I will take you to um, the next slide. So the um, family business of the gold shares started in mid 19th century, almost the same time of the album that I've shown you. And um, they, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the first person to come to Malta was Olaf Goldshare Sr. He was doing business uh, in Malta through uh, maritime businesses, shipping industry, the shipping industry, which was very, very strong at the time and very present in Malta, and they owned ships. The, the gold shares owned ships, and they were using them to transport um, uh, merchandise from Malta to North Africa, Sicily, and the Adriatic, uh, Adriatic ports. And then while he was uh, in Malta, um, he actually, this is the, the photo album that I showed you, and uh, this is Olaf Goldshare Sr. And from the photos, which are in the, in the album, we, we have three images, which are very important. These are very rare photos. As I said, they, they go back to the 1850s by Leandro Preziosi, two of them. The, the two standing uh, full length uh, photos are by Preziosi and the, the one in the, in the um, oval shape um, card de visite was by Conroy. So Conroy was an English photographer a bit later than Preziosi, and there we are. So Olaf Golsher Senior is making use of um, you know this innovation by capturing you know him, himself in in uh, full regalia. Here it's a, it's a coat, it's a coat dress uh, because he was counsel for um, Netherlands, and you know he was. He was a very um, well-connected businessman, so he wanted to show also his status by taking the, these photos in the studio. Um, the, as I said, the, the size of the photo is around six centimeters by 10, so they're very small, but very handy to, to give out. So um, such photos would be made in quite an, a good number of photos, so he could distribute them and we also have them in the family album. And now we start meeting um, different members of the family. So again, on the left-hand side, there is Vincenza Golsher. Um, she's Maltese, she comes from a very good family and uh, a well-to-do family. And, uh, she was very young when she married Olaf Golsher Sr. Um, here is another uh, picture that I am presenting, which is part of the art collection at Palazzo Falzon. She's of a, an older age, obviously, in the late 40s, I would say. But you can see from both photos, um, excuse me, presentations, because one is a photo in black and white and the other one is, is a painting. But you can see that the, from the style of, of clothing, um, she was a woman of very good taste, very fashionable. Um, in the first one, the black and white one, we're seeing the Victorian style, which was the fashion of, of the day. Um, and then later on, you see her, there's more detail in, in the depiction of the painting, uh, including uh, jewelry that really shows her status. Um, another sweet photo is um, two of their sons. They had 10 children, God bless them. And two of them, um, the elder ones were uh, James and Gustav. 
So Gustav is the elder one and James is the small one. Again, this is a typical setup um, of a studio photo where children are told not to move, they have to rest. Actually, he's resting his hand, uh, his arm on the table to make sure that there is no movement. Sometimes they even had stands, iron stands, um, behind them to make sure that children won't move because they were the most difficult to photograph. The, the exposure was long, so the moment they move a little bit, uh, the, the picture, would, the photo would be ruined. But they seemed very well behaved and the, the, the photographer here, Preziosi, again, Leandro Preziosi, captured the, uh, the two charming boys. Okay, so what do we know? It's, it's, we're not just um, looking at photos, but um, when we combine the photos with other documents, um, we are putting a face to um, the person we're reading about, the person we're studying, we're getting to know more the characters, what their life was all about. And these two boys in their young age, like teenagers, were sent to London um, to further their education. They were at the University College of London. And luckily in the archives, we have uh, a number of letters that were um, collected by Gustav. He kept them as a memento for him and he bound them into a sort of book form. The dates are jumbled up, but it's approximately 1870s. That was the period that they were in London. And I mean, the, the stories that will are emerging from the transcripts of, of these letters is amazing. So we get um, an idea of how, how difficult travel was, for example, you know, the crossover of letters. So you send a letter and you already received another letter, which is not in reply of the first one that you've sent because of transportation. So there'll be sometimes a bit of a confusion as continuation. We do take things for granted because now we just send a message and it's delivered there and then. But in those days, it was more difficult. They were at an advantage because uh, they were in the shipping industry and probably they knew more how the system works. And we also have some, uh, you know, anecdotes like uh, the two boys are saying we're really missing Malta and we'd like, you know, a, a taste of it. Can you please send us a box of oranges and prickly pears? So there are these, these very sweet and um, humane aspect when, when, when um, you go through these letters. And we have the photos also to, to show us um, who these personalities were. At the moment, I must say that I'm very grateful to a number of research volunteers at Palazzo Falson who really dedicate a lot of time to go through documents such as this one and photos and uh, passports. So it's, it's uh, an ongoing, we just never, uh, we, we, we're always coming up with, with new discoveries and that's the beauty of um, re research. So as I was saying, we also have passports. Um, this is quite an old passport because it belongs to Gustav. Now, yeah, we don't see him as a little boy anymore, but he's um, uh, quite mature in his age. He was instrumental for the Share shipping company, which still exists today. So it's still run by, by the family, by the Goldshare family. And this is quite a rare um, document as well, which has a photo. So here we have the two combined together. Um, Gustav was traveling uh, quite a lot and uh, there, were, there are a number of passports um, issued for the, for the family. The thing is that to every two years, they had to be changed. And even from visas, applications of visas um, uh, will help us to identify um, or locate uh, the time and the country that they visited. So they were traveling quite a lot, even though uh, transportation was very, very limited. Uh, on the right hand side, uh, we have also, it's not very clear because it needs good restoration and it was, it is uh, in a bad state, 
but at least it has been um, preserved in the best possible way. This is a photo that is hand painted. So here we also see the style of photography of the time. So a black and white photo would have been professionally um, hand painted to give color and make the person look more real because before um, printing of photography was only possible in black and white, but they did find a way to put in color. Um, and this is an example also of the development in photography. And uh, Gustav also married a Maltese lady. Her name was um, Elisa Balbi. Um, she was a very strong woman. She came also from a, a notable family. Um, uh, and she, she was um, also instrumental in securing Palazzo Falson. Um, in, uh, after her husband died, um, they were in his last years, they were living in Rome because they had a beautiful house uh, in Rome. Um, she decided to buy Palazzo Falson in Imdina, um, which is an, an outstanding uh, medieval uh, old city. And uh, I think she, well, we think that uh, she wanted to make sure that her son, her only son, Olaf, uh, Olaf Jr. now, um, will settle down in, in Malta and also place all his collection because he was all the time amassing collections um, wherever he was traveling. So thanks to Elisa, um, Palazzo Falson, together with her son, um, she bought a very good property, which we are happy that now it is enjoyed by the general public. This is a photo taken on the rooftop of the office of the Golsher Shipping Company with some family members and friends. And uh, they're encircled in the middle. There is Olaf now at a, an advanced age and, and Elisa. And here is the first picture of our Olaf. Um, he was uh, called you know, by friends as Oli, so we like to call him Oli to also distinguish him from his father. And uh, this is the very first picture of Oli when he was uh, a young boy. He was always um, a pet lover. We have a number of, of uh, records of dogs, both in documents and also in, in, in pictures. So here it says it all. He was uh, educated in Dulwich. Um, in, in, in London, then he lived for quite a, uh, some time in, in Rome, um, I would say in between the 20, 1920s and 1930s, and that is where he started his artistic life. He was not very much interested in the family business, but he was always, always interested in art, in traveling. He was a bit of a bon vivant, bohemian, um, he had a group of friends in Italy, they were artists, they were called the Confraternita della Pipa, so they were um, painting together and what brought them together was art and smoking pipes. So um, it's, uh, it, it's quite colorful, that, that, that period of his life, we know very little uh, of that uh, um, early years, we would say between 20 and 30, we know little about um, Olive Goldshare, and actually at a later age in his 40s when he settled down in Malta. So here is another picture. We're seeing Olive now as a young man looking straight into us, which is wonderful to capture. Um, you know, this uh, it seems like a tableau vivant. It seems like everyone is looking at different directions as if they are posed. Uh, to do so almost, you know, you could see something like this on stage. And it was very fashionable at the time to have these, these um, kind of setup for photography, group photography. Um, it could have been taken by a, an amateur photographer. We don't know who the photographer is because here we moved away from the card de visite. This is at a, at a later stage. And these uh, are part of other family albums and we, they're just 
pictures without any captions. So we are trying, we've been over the past 10 years, trying to identify the people in the photos, maybe see what occasion it was. In my case, I'm interested in dress, which I can date the, the, the photos approximately. So, you know, we all build on the um, visual documents that we have, everyone pitching in as a group of researchers to create the narrative of Palazzo Falson and the people who live today. So here we see um, Gustav, uh, the father, um, giving us a side profile, and Olaf with his smart bow looking straight uh, at us. Um, Olaf wasn't just enjoying himself in life. He, he also participated um, actively in World War I. Here we have a picture of that period and also World War II. Um, so he was doing his part, both as a volunteer and both then as an, an engagement with an enrollment with, uh, um, um, uh, with, with, with the British Army. And uh, in Malta, he also um, served during World War II. We also have diaries um, of the period. When we say diaries, it's really just few notes. It's not like a diary writing his story but maybe appointments or maybe something really special happened. And in one of the albums, in a, excuse me, in one of his diaries, he mentions that, you know, it was very uh, a, a tough day where they had to drag people out from the rubble. And this happened in, in uh, Vittoriosa. So he's experiencing the harshness of the war. And um, it wasn't just him, but also his wife. And here we have a pretty picture, two pictures of her. He met Nella at his late age, in his late 40s. And um, they, got, they got married in 1938. And she was very fond of nature, of animals. And here we see her as a young lady full of life. Um, uh, very avant-garde for, for her time. She loved to wear trousers. So you can imagine the people in India, nothing, wearing trousers, riding the bike, smoking cigarettes, you know, inviting people at Palazzo Falson on these parties. And, uh, and uh, you know, there was a lot of, they created a lot of movement in India because they were all the time inviting people there. Uh, they also had another um, a country house in, in Mjar which was like more relaxed, informal, where they, have, where they had their chickens, their beehives. There was a donkey, which was also listed in the, uh, you know, as to be taken care of after they die. And, uh, you know, a number of animals, birds, and they, were, they, they had a, a lovely setup. Um, very close to nature and they were involved also in, in, in gardening, maybe to relax and to have people over at Villa Brunswick in, in Mjall. Uh, this continued, we have a number of photos where we see uh, Nella being active, you know, like rolling up her sleeves to, to help out in, in um, her duties or let's say, her joy really in looking after her chickens. She, she really loved them and, and also the garden. And part of the family were a number of dogs. There was definitely a cat at Palazzo Falson because we have a photo of the cat, but a number of dogs. And here again, we have um, documents that um, show, for example, the certificate of a breed of a dog. Um, the, a note in a, in a diary that says, today we're taking the dog to the vet, or the dog is not well. There was also a bad accident with one of, of the dogs that was run over, and sort of Olaf was really angry, saying, oh, how I wish, you know, I got hold of that person who, who did this to our dog. So they had this love for animals. And as I said, it wasn't just Olive that was involved in, in World War II, in helping people, 
but it was also Nella. And here we see Nella at a mature age um, where she was um, very, very active as an officer in the nursing division of St. John's Ambulance Brigade. Um, she was awarded as well for her good work and we also know um, from oral uh, history, uh, people who remember her to this very day when they were very young, that she was giving um, first aid courses at Palazzo Falzon. So she was helping the locals to give help, you know, first aid to anyone who is injured during the war. Uh, recently, I also came across a document which shows that she was a pioneer in introducing first aid as a course to prisoners. So they were like really forward uh, thinkers, you know, they were um, always, weren't just enjoying art, culture, inviting people, you know, but they were also giving a lot. They were very philanthropic in their daily life. And this brings us to Palazzo Falzon. This is one of the old pictures of Palazzo Falzon. A lot of dignitaries were invited to, to um, the museum. Now it's a museum, but in, at that time it was their, their home, of course. Um, and it was their joy to, to entertain. We suppose that Olive was very proud to show his collections and saying all the stories, uh, you know, and, and, and Nella was Italian. Um, she, she knew very well how to, to entertain as well. And um, we have a number of you know, documents that gives us very good evidence that a lot of people um, visited uh, their home. Besides that, they also opened their doors for um, philanthropic work, which, for example, we know that they organized um, a party, a dinner for poor people and elderly in Rabat and in Dina area. Uh, not only in their house, they were also organizing um, other activities in, in uh, the theater, in, in Rabat, for example, and in a school. There, there are records that they hosted um, refugee children there, you know, Christmas time. So they were doing their part. They, they were really part of the, the community. And here we see Olive Gulsher really in his old age. Um, uh, he died in uh, 1962. Um, he sort of slowed down in producing more paintings, his own paintings. He was more concentrating on uh, the restoration of, of the house. Um, and also on a national level, um, being a voice for, for our uh, culture, our um, archaeology. He was all the time writing on the newspaper, you know, complaining about building or how we should really look after our, our heritage. Um, and also he pioneered underwater archaeology. So he tried to shift um, people who were um, spearfishing into the love for care of fish and enjoying it for other generations. Uh, besides that, also um, divers who would come across uh, some remains they, they would report back, you know, to the right people like Olaf and, and a group of other people who were behind the institution of this archaeology um, organization. And uh, they also organized expeditions, professional expeditions, which led to um, very fruitful results. So yes, um, we are biased about Olaf Golsher. We really see the good side of him. I'm sure there was also maybe, um, you know, not so, not so bright side of life, like uh, each and every one of us. But um, the scope of this presentation is to bring to life character through photography, um, personal photos, 
personal correspondence um, and further research to put it in any context. And here we see um, Oli and Nella on one of their trips. This was a trip to Sweden, who was uh, very much interested in his ancestry. So we went to look for places that the family had lived in, uh, some family members that were still uh, alive there. So he was interested also in, in uh, his family line and they traveled extensively. They traveled, um, they were very good travel companions together. They did their own separate traveling as well. And we are lucky that we have a lot of photos of the, the different um, places that they, they've been to. So this brings us to an end. Um, I really hope that uh, one day you will come and see Palazzo Falson because there is so much more to say. I didn't give you a tour of the house, um, but it's, it's a, a, a beautiful, and not, not just beautiful, but it's every, every stone uh, in, in the house. There's a story from graffiti, you know, scratched on the walls up to, you know, so it covers from the 13th century to the 20th century. There's definitely like a storyline of, of our history through uh, the journey of Palazzo Falson and uh, its, uh, its, its archives. So I thank once again Icon Malta for um, inviting, inviting me to give this talk, especially Patricia Camilleri and Joseph Skiro and uh, they're doing great work and we hope to participate more in exchanging information. Um, you know, so, so many interesting things happening around us, even though we've been through quite a, a tough time, but uh, we are here, we're even stronger than the day before. And I must also thank Fondazione Patrimonio Malti for trusting me in uh, curating and looking after uh, Palazzo Falson, this, treasure that we have in Malta and also stuff that are there hands-on day in day out as well as research volunteers who have helped me to bring you this presentation today. So thank you very much.